All right. Well, I think that um, we've waited for five minutes. I think we can start. Um, maybe new people will join as well. Oh, and they are joining as we're speaking. Um, but um, anyway, we have planned this workshop to last for around 90 minutes. It might take us a bit longer, might take us a bit less time than that, probably longer because usually there are a lot of questions at the end. So let's refrain from asking questions until the very end. However, you can always ask questions in the chat and Ekaterina has volunteered to help me with um, <laughs> replying and uh, recording the messages and questions that will appear in the chat and we will address, of course, everything at the very end. So, um, okay, so here today is Ekaterina Vodrova, um, a Maisie co-founder and CEO, and me, a Maisie community manager. Um, welcome to the workshop. Um, Hi, guys. Very happy to see you all. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> yes. So uh, here is the plan for um, this workshop. We are going to look at the community where you can find different lessons, how you can look at people's profiles and how you can save the lessons that you can find there. Then we're going to look at lesson creation and how to use 16 different tools uh, for making lessons um, interactive, engaging and also an AI assistant, which is um, the latest edition of the platform. And you're going to see how it works for yourselves. Then I'm going to tell you how to share and sell on Amazie. And at the end, we will have um, Q&A. And also at the very end, we'll have a little surprise for you. So those who watch until the end will receive an exclusive gift from Amazie. So <laughs> wait until the end. All right. So um, let's start with the community. There we go. So the community is the heart of the Amazi. This is where you can see all the great lessons that have been shared by our teachers and users and people who use Amazi in general. And um, this is where you can find a lot of premium and free materials and uh, save a lot of lesson preparation time. Uh, this is the first thing that you see when you open Amazi. And um, here, I'm going to show you how you can search through Amazi and also how you can modify the parameters of your search. So the first thing you can see is uh, these uh, filters. You can look at all the lessons available on Amazi. You can look at only lessons at a premium, so the ones you can buy. And also we have some free lessons here as well. So you can uh, modify this search parameter. Also, we have a lot of different languages uh, on the platform. We have German, we have Spanish, we have, um, I don't know, Italian, um, French and so on. So you can even choose the language um, that you want to find the lesson on. And of course, we also have a lot of different levels. So let's say you want to find a lesson in English um, for A2 pre intermediate level. And then also the last parameter are um, the age, is the age. So for kids, for teens, and for adults. So there will be lessons for every age here as well. This will help you see um, the exact lessons that you're looking for. The last parameter that a lot of people overlook is this one. Uh, so the automatic is date of creation. So you'll see the latest lessons published on Amazie. However, you can also um, sort them through alphabetical order and by popularity. Um, popularity means that the lessons that will be displayed, the first lessons that will be displayed, have been downloaded or saved or bought by the teachers a lot of times. So the ones that have been maybe longer in Amazie, but not necessarily even the ones that are simply um, popular with the teachers here. Um, so then the last thing you can do or need to do is probably simply write in the topic that you want to find the lesson for. So let's say you need a grammar topic um, that can be, I don't know, articles. No, let's remove one. Okay, so we have a lesson for articles for a B1 level. Um, sometimes the levels can be modified for pre-intermediate, for elementary, for upper intermediate even. So if you do not find lessons for a particular level, for example, it's always okay to look at lessons of a different level because then you can easily modify them or they can actually be suitable for your students. So keep that in mind. Let's open this lesson, for example, and take a look at it. 
Okay, so here's the lesson. This is what it looks like when you open it. Um, this is a preview and you can see what the lesson will look like for your students. A lot of pictures, texts, a lot of features, writing, and so on. If you like the lesson that you see, you can copy it to drafts. I've seen that some teachers sometimes simply save the link to the lesson without saving it to drafts. And the thing is that sometimes lesson can disappear from the community. They can be delivered, deleted for um, uh, breaching terms and conditions, or the author can remove the lesson. The author can modify the lesson. So if you like the lesson that you see in the community, I recommend you to immediately save it because this way you will not lose it. So let's click copy to drafts and then on the in the bottom right corner, you will see copy to drafts. You can click open the lesson here. It will open your copy or if you go back, here is drafts. So this is what teachers, all teachers have. This is basically a place where all the lessons you've created, saved or bought will be displayed. This is your teacher's folder. This is your safe haven. This is your humble abode. This is where you have everything that you have accumulated on the platform. Only you have access to your drafts. Nobody else does. Your students don't. We don't have access to drafts. That's just for you. Um, so whatever you do here stays here. And this is the lesson you've saved. Now it's your lesson and you can modify it. You can share it with your students and you can uh, adapt it to the course you're doing, for example, or to the lesson that you're planning to teach. And I'm going to show you how to do that later. Now let's go back to the community. And another thing you may notice here is that the lessons contain a lot of information, the lesson cards here. So we have been searching, you know, for a particular lesson, but also you can see that here we have different names as well. So the names that are displayed here are the names of the creators, right? So imagine that you like a lesson by a particular creator. What you can do is you can click on the name and you can see their profile. All the lessons that the teacher has shared with the community are displayed here. And you can basically do the same in a teacher's profile. You can sort by the price, so it can be premium or free, by the language, by the level, by the age, but only within this creator's profile. And you can see a lot of their, uh, a lot of information about them as well. You as content creators can also modify your profiles and this way showcase your expertise, your talent, your experience and your professional background. Um, so let's, for example, see, okay, so here we have a fantastic teacher, <laughs> Frank. Hi, Frank. Um, what you can do, um, there are two things you can do. Um, the first thing is if you like the content that this author creates, you can always follow them. Let's do just that. You can see how many followers the lesson the person has, how many lessons the person has published, and how many times the lessons have been saved by other teachers. And now what that does is it will display this author in your feed. Um, the difference between feed and community is that community displays lessons created by all teachers using Amazy. So if you are a teacher and you publish a lesson to Amazy, it will be displayed in the community. If you make it public, it will be displayed in the community. But then sometimes, you know, you don't want to look through all the lessons. You want to only look through the lessons created by your favorite content creators. You follow them and then you go to feed and this is how you can see only the lessons created by the people you follow. So you can customize your own feed on Amazy and you can easily see only the lessons that you know are great or you know that you will like them or enjoy them. And here you can do all the same that I've shown in the community. You can um, uh, edit the filters, you can sort by popularity, you can search by name of the lesson and so on. So for example, if we type in work, yeah, we will see some lessons um, on the topic of work created by uh, the content creators you have followed. Another thing that you can notice in the community, and um, I've shown you a little bit, yes, here, is subscribe. 
So what that button does is you can notice that the teacher can have a lot of different premium lessons. You can buy them all individually. But if you have seen this content creator's work and if you've seen the lessons they create and you really like them, you don't have to buy each lesson individually. You can subscribe to their account for the price that they've set. This is a monthly fee you pay to this creator. And you will get access to all their premium content for that fee a month. So you subscribe to this creator and then you will get access to all of this content immediately and all the new content that they publish within that subscription period that you have. You as content creators can, of course, turn that subscription on as well. And I'm going to show you how. So how do you create your own amazing profile? How do you showcase yourself and your talent and how do you do all of that? Yes, Ekaterina. Yeah, sorry, Paulina, thank you very much. We have a question. Um, let's just speak about that and then uh, we will move sure. further. Uh, so can I share parts of the lessons on my social media? That's the question from the chat. Right, of course. Are you going? Are you talking about your own lessons? Or are you talking about the lessons created by others? I think that's... Uh, others. Others, right. So basically, uh, if this lesson is in public access, right, if it's a free lesson um, available for public, then yes, you can add a link to this lesson in your social media. And you can maybe add a little screenshot for the lesson, but of course you cannot replicate or reproduce it without mentioning the creator or without the explicit permission from the creator. And it's very easy to do that, actually. You can contact all authors on Amazie. When you open a lesson in the community, you have this button, contact author, and you can write them a question, right? You can even ask them to teach you if you want. Or, for example, you can write words of gratitude. I've been using your lessons for the past three months, and I just wanted to say how great of a creator you are. Keep on good work. Something like that. And it will really, really mean a lot to the creator, I'm sure of that. Uh, or you can ask, uh, can I please use this particular lesson and show it to my subscribers on social media and so on. Right. But especially... Um, if it's a um, publicly available lesson for free, then yes, you can sh share it, but uh, yeah, just to, like, yeah, to mention uh, the creator and the link to the lesson. It's a, it's a good way to showcase various um, lesson plans that can represent a valuable content for speaking skills uh, training, for example, or exam preparation training. If you observe, if you have a special teacher community, for example, on one of the social medias, it's a good way just to showcase the content, but it's it's not a, a good thing just to copy it and uh, just redistribute, redistribute on other platforms and uh, pretend and it's your content. That's not good. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, we were talking about the profiles. Um, so this is where you can see your own profile. You click on this icon here. This will be your picture or nothing if you haven't set up your profile yet. Um, and here you can go to settings and change everything. You can change the bio, you can add social links, you can add your background and so on. And in the dashboard is where you can turn on the premium subscription for your um, profile. The premium subscription that will allow other users to subscribe to your premium content for a monthly fee. So you can turn it on and you can set the price. For example, we do not um, limit you in how much you ask for your content. You can set any price you want, but of course the market decides. So it's always a good idea to look at what other users set their prices at, uh, how much they um, sell their lessons for and how much they set their prescriptions at. So it's a good idea to look at others, but also um, you are free to do your own thing. That's for sure. Okay, so yeah, turned it off. All right, now we've talked about the community. We've talked about finding lessons in the community, saving lessons in the community. Let's take a look at a few lessons that, you know, can be found easily. Yes, Katerina. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I just wanted to add little comments about uh, setting price for subscription. 
for some educators, Amazi is a great place to try what it's like to have your own business. Because sometimes during our teacher careers, right, when we work for some schools, online schools or other organizations, we often think about, okay, if, if I like work just, like, you know, separately, I will make more money. And uh, I, it would probably, like, in financial way, it would probably be better for me. But actually, when you don't have any experience on how to build your own company and how to set prices, you need some time to research the market. And Amazi is a great opportunity for you just to research the market, to see the prices, to see other profiles and to decide what should be the competitive price for your content. So maybe even $2 or two pounds is a great price and it's better than 20 because it will bring you 100 followers, right? 100 subscribers. So, and it will eventually give you more profit than if you just put 20 pounds and get two people who subscribed on your profile. That's all, sorry. <laughs> No, it's fine. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at the different lessons you can find in the community. I will ask you to um, write the topic of the lesson that you recently taught or that you're teaching or planning to teach in the chat, please. Everybody's trying to remember because now it's summer holidays in, in many countries. <laughs> Okay, I have I see the first one coping with stress. So let's see what we have for stress. Oh, we have exactly the <laughs> coping with stress lesson. Um, we have that how to cope with stress speaking club, battling stress and anxiety. Let's maybe take a look at this one. How to cope with stress. It's a pretty popular lesson, I see. And yeah, you can see that there are a lot of there is a video, writing, there is a matching exercise to do like that um writing exercise and so on so and it's um it's a free lesson so you can simply copy it to drafts and immediately start teaching with it um okay what else do we have summer activities let's write in summer oh we have a lot of lessons for summer um i think this one is great um, as far as I remember, I've used this one, Summer Bucket List. Did I? Yeah, it's a funny one. Yeah, lots of different phrases for summer, a lot of questions. Um, this one was, I think I've seen this one before as well. Oh, pretty popular lesson. Yes, I have used it in class. It actually went pretty well. I do recommend this lesson. It's really good. And also, what else do we have? Fear. Let's see, do we have anything for fear? Okay, so we have one for advanced students, neuroscience, artificial intelligence, and our fears. Talking about fear, what is Bill Gates worried about? Fear at its best and worst. Okay, let's take a look at this one, talking about fear for B1. We have a lot of, oops, we have a lot of words connected to fear. We have a gap feeling exercise. Oh, it's a short one, can be used as homework. And do we have a longer one? Where, where did we have it? Mm, how about fear at its best and worst? Okay, so here we have some questions. We have different types of fear reading, uh, more questions for discussion and more reading and so on. So you can download it as well and you can modify it if you want or you can use it as it is. And maybe this one as well. Some brainstorming, some phrases vocabulary, video, gap filling exercise, a writing exercise. This one is great. Okay, so we can find a lot of. Um, and passive. Yeah, I see also passive. Let's let's search for that one. 
Okay, we have passive voice this, we have passive voice all tenses and forms actually were created by Maisie Content. So Maisie has um, its own profile here where we publish a lot of lessons, not only to help other teachers <laughs> with finding the materials they want, but also to showcase what the platform can do. So definitely check out Maisie Content. You can subscribe to us and we publish newsletters here. We publish a lot of free lessons. We have some, a few premium lessons, but yes, a lot of them are created by us. Right. So let's see again what we have inside. So passive, this one, for example, for pre-intermediate level students. And it also focuses on the vocabulary of objects and materials. Questions for discussion, pictures to brainstorm, um, reading, exercise with vocabulary, even describing graphs and grammar. So, and it's a free lesson. So again, just type in passive in the community and you will find all the lessons you want. Okay, so how do you create all these great lessons? How do you make what you have just seen? Um, Click on create a lesson, this big blue button, and you're taken to the creation space where everything happens. All right. So this looks like a blank page. Nothing here, but don't be afraid of the blank page. Um, if you are, just to show you what we have, we have some templates as well. So if you simply type in template in the search, Amazing Content has published several templates, speaking lesson template, reading, listening, and pronunciation. And you can save it and you can adapt it and customize it easily. Uh, just add your own vocabulary, your own texts, maybe even your own pictures, and so on. And there are a lot of comments on how you can adapt the lesson within this. Right. Okay, but anyway, the first thing that you can do is write the lesson title. Of course, maybe you will want to do this at the end, but with the lesson title, we always recommend you to use some keywords. I saw that there was a very nice comment on, you know, that we should add keywords to the search. We are planning to do that for sure. But for now, if you want your lesson to be found easily, write in the grammar and vocabulary point that is going to be mentioned in the lesson. So if you're teaching about, I don't know, passives, write passive in the title. If you're teaching about um, food, write food. And that, you know, that will help other teachers find your lesson easily. Uh, you can also add a cover. A cover is the first thing that everybody sees about your lesson. This is something that grabs the attention. So you can simply use a picture for your cover or you can design the cover yourself like we do a lot with the amazing content. We write the topic of the lesson, we write you know, it in big, bold letters so that the person sees it immediately and think, oh, what's that? I want to open that. So a cover, no, don't judge a book by its cover, but um, maybe grab a book. <laughs> because of its cover that that happens a lot so let's add a cover um the uh dimensions of the cover are similar to a linkedin uh, banner so when you want to design your cover you can go to canva.com for example and you can find a template for linkedin banner and this will be the same dimension as our cover so this is how i designed this one and here it is. You can also add a little touch to the lesson with an emoji and it can just represent whatever you're teaching. So it can be a burger emoji for um, for teaching about food or you can, um, you know, write um, a robot for future or technology or something like that. And this is where you choose the tags for language level and um the um the age right so let's say that we are doing a lesson on articles then you can start immediately start typing um i want to write the objectives of the lesson this is a normal text and if i highlight it i can um modify it a little bit make it bold make it italic underline it strike through and so on also, I can hide it 
in a spoiler, so it will be all gray until you click on it in the student mode. And also you can add a link to it. Right. What else you can do? You can convert this. to other types of blocks. So we have text, we have heading. Heading is a bigger type of text. And you can basically do everything as with text, but just change the um, size of it. You can also make uh, change the colors and you can also highlight them like this. Uh, thing is that the bottom line of the text corresponds with the top line of the uh, highlight. So this is another way to hide text and then it will become visible only when you highlight it like this. So instead of using spoiler like this, you can simply hide the text in a color. Okay, let's keep it like this. And then the next thing you can do is add a checklist. A checklist is now a very simple tool. You can add points to the checklist and then you or the students can tick them off. So usually use it for objectives. Uh, you can use it when you ask opinions. For example, tick the things that you like, tick the things that you agree with, tick the things that you have experienced in your life. Uh, tick the things that you tick the words you remember from the lesson. You can use it for a lot of different uh, exercises and in a lot of different ways. It's very versatile. So let's write just one, two, and three, and then we are able to tick it off. There is no correct answer for checklists, obviously. Right. Then the next thing, let's talk about a normal list. Um, a list is if you want to teach grammar, for example, and you want to add grammar points that are listed, or you want to um, add examples through a list or questions through a list. It can be numbered, or it can be un unnumbered, unordered, like a simple, a, a simple circle like this. So one, two. Just typing in the chat, sorry, two and three. Like this. Again, ordered, unordered. Do not ignore these three dots on the right because sometimes they add extra features. For example, with the heading here that we have, you can change the size of the heading this way. Another thing you can do is you can move the blocks up and down like this or delete them completely. All right, uh, you can, of course, obviously add exercises or uh, tools between you know, what you already have. So I want to add a link here. I can simply click on the plus this way. The next thing that we can look at is a divider. Um, it separates parts of the lesson. So imagine that you have added your objectives, then you want to separate it from the next part of the lesson, add a divider, simple three asterisks. Another thing that we sometimes do is you can add a picture to divide parts of the lesson. You can design these um, page breaks, so to say. Again, use the same LinkedIn banner and add it to the lesson. Let's see, like this. And now it separates and it can be the heading for the next part. The next thing is the link. You can embed links beautifully into the lesson. Um, for example, you want to add a Quizlet set or you want to add some online grammar exercise or link to an article. Let's go on The Guardian and find an article we want our students to read, for example. So we copy the link and we add it here. It creates a nice preview. You see what the link is about, where it leads you, and it's clickable. It even has a picture. Another way to add a link is just add it to the text. Um, imagine you want to ask your students to read a specific article again. Click on the link here, paste it, and that's it. It's clickable as well. If you simply add the link like this, 
it won't work, won't do anything. So either add it inside the text, embedded in the text, or use the link tool here. However, for YouTube videos, and I see a lot of that in the community, um, if you simply add um, a YouTube video link here, like this, it will only show you a preview. So maybe, maybe for example, let's Ten tips for use this video, just a random video, and see what it will happen. You add it here. You can't watch it. You have to go on YouTube to watch this video. Not very convenient. Maisie strives to condense everything in one place to create this streamlined experience for both teachers and students. So what you can do is you only for YouTube links, you simply paste them like I did here, but they will embed in the lesson. And now mm -hmm. you can watch the video here inside the lesson and the students can do the same and you can, you know, change the speed of the video, you can turn on subtitles and so on. A bonus feature is that we, um, you will not see any ads if you embed it in the lesson. So that's a recommendation for you to add videos to the lessons instead of sending you know them to, on youtube because no ads here okay that was the link another thing is media so media is the button that will allow you to upload different files on the platform like an audio a video file or maybe it can be um a powerpoint presentation or a pdf you do not have to use this button. We have it because, you know, sometimes people need a button to do a thing, but you can simply drag and drop different files here, or you can copy and paste them here as well. So um, let's see. Maybe I have, okay, I have a ticket to a water park and I will embed the, the ticket to the water park here like this. It's already used. So. <laughs> okay. Um, or you can just drag and drop or copy paste it. That was media. Um, so you can see that audio, video files work. Um, if you have, for example, a WMA audio file, or you have maybe um, some strange audio file, the platform automatically converts the audio files into MP3. Um, with video files, mostly just um, MP4 works, so um, they have to be MP4, um, but with audio files, they automatically convert it. Okay, what's the next tool that we have? Um, and it's a table. A table, it may seem very simple, right? You have a table, you have rows and lines, and what else can you do with it? It's just a table, right? For grammar, maybe. But you can use it for so many different ways. So you can use it to brainstorm, as we've seen in some of the uh, lessons. You can use it to introduce some vocabulary like this. Um, you can use it. Do we have it here? We had it in the lesson about summer. Uh, we my did. The great. We did, didn't we? Um, okay, let's let's go to the community. Uh, summer plans. How was your summer? Or how was your summer? No, I think I think it was um, summer uh, up. Sum up. Yeah. Yeah. Summer up and no, <laughs> no. Okay. Well. Okay. Let Let me just explain. So what you can do is you can. Um... I was about fear. Sorry. Yeah, it was about fear. Yeah, that's right. So, for example, you can ask your students to sort the vocabulary. Um, to the table so you add some words here and you ask them to write the words in the gap now i think at this point it's important to mention that students can't simply write everywhere in the lesson like we're doing right now we are in the editing mode we are editing the lesson we are writing we're uh, writing tasks and so on but if the student could simply go and delete this or go and delete that that would wreak havoc right if they do that by accident for example we don't want that so students can't write completely everywhere in the text and we have some interactive um, tools for that table is one of the interactive tools where students can write so if we go into student view, I'll just demonstrate that. As a student, I will not be able to write here. 
I will be able to, you know, use the checklist. I will not be able to delete anything or write and delete this, but I can click on the link, I can click on this link and watch the video. I can look at PDF file and so on. I can't write here, but I can write in the table. So table is one of those tools where students can actually, that they can interact with it. Okay, going back to the edit mode, um, you can use table in a very unconventional way. Let me show you. So you add a table and then you can delete all extra columns and all extra rows. And you are left with a simple line where students can take notes. So let's do it this way. There you go. So now in student view, maybe you want to let your students write new words, write their ideas, write questions, write answers, um, write word definition, something like that. Add this single line from a table to let them do that. As a student, I can't write here, but I can here. So I can add some notes from the lesson as a student and that will save. So very convenient for everyone. Okay, that was the table. Uh, the next one is word counter. This is another um, uh, tool for writing, but where here students can, you know, write whatever they want, as much as they want or as little as they want. Um, here you can set the number of words that you want your students to write. So let's say 180. It is great for teaching um, writing for exams, for example, specific types of writing like essays, um, emails, um, paragraphs, uh, proposals, and so on. So you give them the task, for example, exercise two, write your essay, and you want them to write around 180 words. So in the student view, you will see how it works. I've written five words, so this is being counted. Okay, the difference again between the table and the word counter, I will demonstrate. If I write here, It increases, stretches the table as more as I write. The more I write here, it stays within the same limit, but you will have the slider on the left. So this is another difference between um, the table and uh, the word counter. Right, so I've talked about those three. Now, timer. Um, again, timer is a great tool for a lot of speaking activities. You can use it again to train for exams. For example, if you're teaching for IELTS speaking or CAE, FCE speaking, you can set uh, the timer for like one minute, for example, and you ask a question and the student has to answer within a minute. So in the student view, the student will click on the timer and it will count down as much as you ask. If you go up, for example, the timer will pop up on the left. Yeah. How else you can use the timer? Um, for brainstorming activities, spend one minute thinking about your ideas. Spend one minute um, coming up with questions. Spend one minute reading the text if you train them for speed reading. Um, spend one minute um, designing something and so on. So again, of course, you can use it for a lot of different exercises. That's the timer. Image decoder. Um, if you want, if you have a screenshot of a text uh, and you want to convert it into editable text, you don't want to just add a screenshot, you want to highlight some things in the screenshot, you can run it through image decoder and it will convert the image into the text. So let's do just that. And let's see how it works. 
how it is. So again, I'm using the same um, cover photo. Welcome to Media Workshops uh, workshop. And here is the text. I have a preview. I can close it if I like it. And then I can convert it, obviously, to text, to heading, and so on. Um, the next one is test. Um, I promised I will tell you about different ways you can use the exercises. Test, again, is a very versatile tool. Um, the obvious way for it you know, to be used is you ask a question. And you write your options. You have one correct answer. You can have two correct answers. All three of them can be correct. You can add as many options as you want. doesn't matter. In the student view, the student has this question, the options, and the ability to check. Here it is. Um, the student's answer will be highlighted in bold. The correct answer will be shown with a tick. The wrong answers will be shown with a cross. So if I chose option one, for example, option one would be would have been highlighted with bold. It would have been bold, right? So this is how we know when it is wrong. But I imagine if you ask fifteen different questions. I think we had it somewhere, um, maybe here. I think we had it in some of the lesson that I've shown. But anyway. You have question check, question check, question check. It's not very convenient when you have to check every single question that you ask. Maybe you want to ask different questions and then check them all together. I'll show you how you can do that. But first of all, how can you use the test? Well, sometimes instead of asking, you know, uh, choose true or false, you can ask your students to choose all true answers. And then you can write all sentences here, taking the ones that are true. And they will have to choose just from the sentences instead of sentence, true, false, sentence, true, false. So they won't have to check every single thing. Um, or, for example, choose the correct sentences, the ones that don't have a mistake in them. Or choose the opinions that the author mentioned. Um, things like that. Choose expressions that can be used for expressing opinion, uh, choose expressions that can be used to disagree with a person, um, a lot of different things. So give your students an option to choose from different sentences and then check. That's the test for you. Now, matching. Matching is a great tool to you know match words and definitions, but not only. Um, it's just the start, really. So the thing is that you can match whatever. You can match word definition, word translation. You can match collocation halves. Like, I really love that exercise. Um, for example, handle, stress, uh, face, your fear, overcome, obstacles and so on so the students will have to match like make sure if it's collocations that you know the word does not apply to several words for example here you can overcome stress or your fear so it won't really work because the students may get confused so make sure the collocations are distinct and can only be used with this pair or sentence halves the beginning of the sentence and the end of the sentence for conditionals for example if i go i will see if I went, I would see. If I had gone, I would have seen. And the students have to match uh, parts of the sentence. Or it can be a grammar rule and example. And this is a great way to introduce grammar to students. Write an example of using, for example, present simple. The bus arrives in five minutes. And then in the matching thing, you write used for timetables in the future. And then the student reads the example and they analyze it and they look at different options and they can match that example with the explanation. And this is um, guided discovery, basically. This is um, deductive approach or no, it's inductive approach. Confuse them sometimes. Guided discovery, anyway. 
Okay, um, so this is how you can use matching. Another one is recorder. So a recorder allows your students to record their voice to you. And this is for extra speaking activity at home. Or, uh, for example, in class when you practice pronunciation. Um, let me do just that. So I can record you a short message like this. And let it save. All right, it's saved. If your student doesn't like the recording, they can delete it, of course. I'm sure, yes, I want to delete it. Okay, it's deleted. Now, I'm going to record another one, don't worry. Um, another thing that students sometimes say, oh, I am, I'm talking and then I want to pause, but I can't do that. But what they don't notice is this pause button here. So you can pause uh, while you're recording and then you can keep recording and continue. So it's okay. You can click, just click pause and then and then you click keep recording. Then you stop and the whole recording saves. Now, as a teacher, of course, what you can do, you can simply listen to it. I'm going to record another one, don't worry. Ooh, I mean, sometimes students, they speak a bit slow, right? You don't want to spend a lot of time checking it. So you can play it at a fast speed. Um, another thing that students sometimes say, oh, I am, I'm talking and then I want to pause, but I can't do that. Right. Um, you can leave these kind of messages to your students as well. Yes, Kate. It works just perfectly when you have to uh, check the whole, like, you know, the amount of speaking tasks by your students. I remember the day it saved my life, like literally. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, and it takes a lot of stress of, of your students when they know that they can record and they can pause whenever they want. You just have to show them that they can pause. So they don't notice it sometimes like it has happened to me like every time I ask my student to record a message to me to record an answer to a question at home they're like oh I didn't do this because I, I couldn't pause and they yes you can just click on the word pause <laughs> yes Kate yeah I have a question how do students save it and send it to me okay it's oh, it saves automatically so um let's delete it I'm just I'm now showing you what it looks like in the editing mode. I'm in the editing mode now, but if I go to student view, I, I record it. I'm a student, I'm recording it for my teacher. Pause. Now, if the lesson is shared with a student, I'll show you how to share lessons with your students in a moment when, when we finish talking about this. Um, this. You will see this recording in your shared copy with a student. You will be able to play it. Like uh, I they don't have to send it anywhere. It is saved in the lesson. Everything is in the same place. That's why I love Amazie so much. I, I know I'm a community manager, but I'm allowed to say it. I love Amazie. <laughs> so yeah, basically you just have a copy for you and the same copy goes to your students. It's, it's so this, yeah, it's, it's a shared, mutually shared file where you see everything your students have done. So for example, they've matched the exercise. You will see the results like this. And you will hear the recording in the lesson. That's all. Like you don't have to go anywhere else. All right. So that was the recording. Um, one more thing. Let me just quickly record a short one. Uh, one more thing is that you can actually download the recording uh, if you want to. I don't know if you want to save it somewhere, you know, in a treasure box. You can download the recording or your students and keep it on your computer. Um, or maybe you need it for something else. I don't know. Um, another, so we have three more, three more exercises, gaps. What gaps do is you can give your students several options in the text to choose from. So it's very much like test, but within the text. Let me explain. Um, I write simple text. The shirt is red. I, ha I want to hide the word red. I want my students to cho choose between different colors. So red is the correct answer. I highlight red, I click on gap, and here I can add wrong options. So the shirt is green, the shirt is blue, the shirt is um, black, let's say. You can add many wrong options for your students. 
this way and then in the student view the students choose from the one let's say they make the wrong choice it will be highlighted in green uh, <laughs> in red in red it's written green here yes but the correct answer will be highlighted in green if you click on it so they can click on their answers on the wrong answers and see the correct one okay back to editing so how you can do this um one thing that is also possible you write a sentence here you have a text and you have a lot of different sentences and the students need to choose true or false one thing you can do as i said go to a uh, test write all sentences here Take the ones that are true, ask the students to choose all true sentences. That's not the only option. You can use gaps and you can write the sentence and then next to it, write true, put it in gap, write false next to it. And that's it. So in student view, they choose between true and false. like that so if you have more than two options true false not given for example that's for ielts i think they have that kind of exercise you can use gaps for that now another one is matching gaps matching gaps will send all the words into yes katrina uh we have a couple of more questions of in the chat if I share it with a number of students, so basically we are still talking about sharing the content with students, right? Will I also be able to see them in the folder? Yeah, I'm, well, I will talk about sharing lessons a bit later, but of course you can. So basically, let's go back. We talked about uh, community feed and drafts, right? Now, this is the lesson we're creating, by the way. And this is the one we saved from the community. So community is where you can find all the lessons, you know, published in the community. Feed is only the ones you're following. Draft is where you create, save lessons. You know, it's your teacher's folder. Now, you can share a lesson with a student and it will be displayed here in the shed. Um, once you share a lesson with a student, it's displayed here. You can share the same lesson with five different students. You will have five different copies. Imagine you take, you have a worksheet paper worksheet you copy it you make five different copies and you distribute the worksheet between five different students they write their answers and they give it back to you you are still left with five different copies that you can check same but online same but here on amazing you share a lesson with a student you get the copy of this lesson here that is for you and your student to see so if you open this for example you will see everything the student has done, this particular student. And then if you have five students who are doing the same lesson, you will have five different copies for the one student, for another student, for another student, for another student. And you can copy each lesson and see their answers. We are working on introducing classes. Can I talk about it? Of course, I was going <laughs> to some small spoiler, please do, yeah. Small spoiler, we're going to change shared and it's just going to be classes or courses. Uh, I don't remember. I don't know if we have already. Classes, 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 classes. classes. So shared is going to turn into classes. You will be able to send, you know, create a class, add different lessons to the class and then add students to the class. And you will be able in the same copy to see, you know, switch between different students. So here, for example, if I open it now, um, you can only see me here. If the student has it open, you will see another picture here uh, of my student. So you will see all the people who have this copy open. But it's only for two people maximum. That's the yeah, problem. Yeah. For yeah. now. If for you now. have like 10 people in your group, it's not very convenient to work with that. So now we are, we are improving the tools yeah. and uh, we are focused on group teaching also because we realize that basically teaching groups uh this is what brings a lot of income to teachers right this is something that makes your income like bigger so that's why we improve these tools scaling scaling um uh, aiming at yes so um for now you can only share 
you know, individual copy with an individual student, you can't, you know, easily switch between different students in the same class. So if you want to see the answers, you have to, you know, close this copy and then open another copy, a mutual copy with a student. So two different students, it will be displayed like this. But yes, you will see everything they've done in the copy. Um, yeah. Sorry, one more question from the chat. Uh, is there a storage limit for student answers, recording, uploads, etc.? No, no. <laughs> you should ask, no, <laughs> but if you upload a video on Amazi, there is a limit of 50. I was megabytes. going to say that, yes. Yeah. So I told you about this tool, uh, the media tool. Yeah, that you don't have to use. Remember, you can simply drag and drop, copy paste. You don't have to use media, to upload audios, videos, PowerPoints, whatever. Um, there is a file limit of you know the size limit that you can upload on Amazing. It's fifty megabytes, so you can't upload whole movies. It's not a file sharing website. So <laughs> we consider this platform as a place where you share, like you know, uh, small pieces separately. Mm -hmm. And if you share like a lot, it's okay. It doesn't matter. And uh, for audio files, 50 megabytes is like too big. I mean, like it's, it's enough. Yeah. So the, 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 the limit is enough for all the lesson materials you need, right? You will not, you know, your teaching materials probably will not exceed 50 megabytes. You know, but I mean, like if you can add uh, 500 files, 50 megabytes each. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can, you can. All right. So we were talking about um, that was uh, matching apps, right? So um, imagine that we have a text, and we want to um, let's say the shirt is green, the sun is red or yellow. I don't know. Depends on the time of the day. Uh, yeah <laughs> and where you're from um <clears throat> and the um i don't know why the shirt is green let's say the grass is green and the sky is blue so i want my students to choose from a list you know sometimes we have gaps and a list of words the students need to write in the gap this is the type of task like that so i send this to the gap I send this to the gap and I send this to the gap. Now this is all gapped. In the student mode, the students will choose from the whole list that you've sent to the gap. So the grass is, uh, let's say green, let's say. Uh, the sun is blue and the sky is yellow. And you can see that I have chosen blue and green. They are already um, faded in color so the students don't have to you know oh, which ones have I chosen it's clear what they have already chosen and the list diminishes by by the time they reach the end and again if you have correct answers they're highlighted in green color and then the red color is for wrong answers and again you can click on the right uh, or the wrong answer on the, on the answer in general and see the others which ones are correct and which ones are not so how you can use this lesson uh this tool um obviously for new vocabulary uh you have five ten words you want to teach you have a text with this ten words you want to teach you add the text to Maisie and you send all the words into the gap and the students simply you know choose to fill the gaps like that this is Push okay. That was unexpected. Um, right. So you choose from um where was I? Yeah, okay, okay. We've talked about matching gaps. You can use it for that. The last one is free input gaps. It works pretty much the same way as all the other gaps, but here when you send the word to the gap the student will have to write it manually by hand. So perfect for grammar tasks, again, vocabulary tasks, anything. Um, the sky is blue, the, the water is, okay, the water is blue too, what am I doing? The sun is yellow. Let's send this to Gap. And so 
you know, as we talked that the sun can be yellow, but sometimes the sun can be red. Well, that can be an alternative answer, right? You can write it here. So you click on it. It's yellow, but it can be red, right? So let's add that as an option. The sky is blue, but for, you know, a lot of people it is gray right now. It's not blue for me. It's not blue for me. It's gray. Oh, I mean, sometimes it's white, right? We we can give these alternative options to students. When you're teaching grammar, for example, sometimes words have contractions, right? You have don't, right? But a student may write do not. You can add that as an alternative option for a correct answer. Let's see student for you. So the sky is, let's say, white. And the sun is, let's write in caps lock red will it change anything no so um the you know whether letters are capital or not doesn't really matter Ekaterina? yes we have another question from the chat can i add extra words to those gaps um i don't think i uh, what kind of gaps are we talking about so uh, i think the, these gaps like uh and i think um i have answered the question probably yeah. Like, no, yes, I think uh, more than one word in, in one gap. I mean, like red, red. red oh, red, oh, you mean? Lightly red or something like that. Light red. Uh, of course. So the sky is light blue. <laughs> uh, you, you can write whole, you can hide whole parts of sentences. So, for example, uh, I have used this task for FC or CAE. Um what was it? What was the name of the task? It's when you convert this sentence into another type of sentence using the world and ball, something like that. Yes. Uh, and uh, so let's see. We have three input gaps, and we write um, a sentence. Um, I don't. I don't know what to do and then I want the student to use the word idea right they have to convert the sentence the current answer will be answer will be I have no idea what to do right and I can hide it in the gaps right and then in the student view again the student needs to write that I have no idea what to do like that and that was the last tool but of course combining all of these tools using them together is what makes you know the lesson creation so fun and you know the lessons that are the result of this are so different and now let me show you uh, the AI tool. This is um, the, the tool that we have recently introduced. This is an AI assistant and an AI co-pilot. You can start typing and you can immediately see it here, AI assistant, or you can see this little uh, robot here on the in the bottom right corner. You click on it and you have a new toolbar here on the right. Um, the topic, um, that you know is um, chosen here it, it just takes directly from the name of the lesson so usually if you have for example past tenses it will automatically take the topic for past tenses and you can change that of course you can add your keywords you can change the type of the um, um, or the text that is being produced we have fictional story so it will be something like um, Samantha opened her eyes and look at the time you know, something like that. A news article will be a more informational piece of text, a dialogue between people, letter written to someone, list of facts, fun facts about um, a topic, for opinions for different people talking about, you know, um, their opinion on the subject, and 10 example sentences. But you can obviously tweak that by asking AI to write something more specific. Let's see how you can do that. Let's take a look. So imagine that we are want we want to teach about articles. Maybe we want to create a grammar test on articles. So what we do, we choose um, the topic of articles, of course. Um, let's say we want informational text, right? It's a grammar rule. So I will choose news article for that. 
that's adults for A2, it automatically takes this information from here, or you can change it. And then let's ask a write AI to write a clear grammar rule on using articles or no article with geographical features with examples. And let's say that we have keywords. Yeah, let's see what will happen. So we want to edit here, generate text. All right. So here's the rule. You can look through it if you like it or not. Um, if you do, you simply click save. And here you have the grammar rule. Okay, it can... Okay, right. So it treats the whole thing as single block. Okay, let's change some things. Let's make it... Let's add some splash of color, something like that. And so on. So we have the grammar rule. Now the students have read the rule. They want to practice it with some exercises. Uh, let's see. Mm, maybe, maybe the topic will be the world map. And we have the same thing. We'll ask them to write a text about the world with clear examples of the use of articles with geographical features. Okay, so here we have it. And then we have the text. And you can convert it into gaps, matching gaps, maybe. Let's convert it to gaps. And so we add some options, for example. Maybe let's add a gap here. And so on, right? So you add your options. You have this text. Now you want sentences. Let's say example sentences. Let's see what it will create without us tweaking anything. All right. So we have a lot of examples with there. If we don't like it, we can try again. And maybe we can choose from different generation um, from different outcomes. And maybe a few sentences from here. A few sentences from there. Okay, let's remove there. And let's maybe tweak it a bit. Yes, Katrina. Yeah, there is a question. Can I can we ask it specifically give more examples that don't use the article? Yeah, that's what I wrote. Yeah, this is actually like you can ask it anything. It's yeah. always <laughs> for you, your co-pilot. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, so we can add it here as well. And then you want to take this text, for example, and then let's add it. Well, we can actually just convert it. Let's convert it into free input gaps and ask our students to write uh, themselves. You can write it in the task itself. So write there and there or or no article like that. Then simply send it to. So here we have a gap. Or some just showcasing that uh, you can choose something from here you can create your own example sentences and so on so in the student view we have the grammar exercise we have pick an option right and we can write ourselves like that and here you go You've created the lesson, basically. Of course, sell it. go and sell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course, of course. Um, it you have to add maybe pictures. You have to think about the outline of the lesson. Maybe add a few more features like matching exercise. Maybe questions. Um, add give notes. Uh, give an opportunity to write notes. Like here, for example, there is a grammar rule. Um, let the students write their own sentences, for example, or take some notes or make, you know, explain the rule in their own words, something like that. Um, you have to write the, the uh, tasks themselves sometimes. You ask, can ask AI to do that. And it's important that you remember that AI is your co-pilot, your assistant. And right now, uh, sometimes the information that AI generates, it, it, it is it can be fictional. Right, so if you want some true facts uh, and you're teaching true facts, you maybe sometimes need to verify the information that AI creates, but it's true for all kind of AI-generated text. Yes, Ekaterina. Yeah, just one more uh, spoiler for today, because in the chat, this topic was uh, just uh, mentioned. Yeah, the, the next version of this AI assistant will also uh, help you to find and to create pictures. Actually, now we are working on a special feature that will allow you to find uh, pictures, license-free pictures for the lessons uh, to illustrate, to showcase maybe some rules, some situations, just to describe a picture, whatever, to uh, illustrate the topic. Because as far as we understand uh, by now, and uh, according to all our experience with teachers and uh, uh, CASDEF interviews, Finding a good picture can really take like, I don't know, hours. And it's not like generated it because you just yeah. write, that's it. But to find the picture, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, spend like, spend two hours creating exercises. Mm, spend five hours choosing the right picture. Yay, that's me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that's why we want to make it as simple as possible. And we will add the feature on the platform as soon as we can. Yes. So, um, basically basically that's all about creating the lesson right but now you've created the lesson what do you do with it how do you share it and let me check we are talking about sharing and selling so um the first thing is copy for a student so you click share again here in the top right corner you click uh, them then you have this copy for a student you create invitation link this link will allow your student to save their progress. The student has to be registered on Amazie. It's very quick to register, to sign up. You use Google account for that, and that's it. You don't have to create a profile, you know, write a lot of information and so on. Simply connect with Google and that's it. You have an account. So you send them this link, this link to the student. When they open the link, the lesson will appear for you and your student in shared. 
only once the student opens the link. If you have sent this link to your student and you don't see, you know, a card or a lesson card there with the student's name, it means they haven't opened the link. So that's how you know. Um, once that happens, once they do open the link, they can start doing, you know, the exercises. For them, it will look like, you know, what you see in students view. When you click on students view, it's just a preview. This is not what you sent to the student. It's just your preview. Um, so you send them this link, copy for a student. Now, once they do the exercises, when you open the lesson that you have in your shared, you will see all the changes. You can listen to the recordings they left for you. You can read the text that they have written to you. You can um, edit it, add exercises, and so on. Because this is a separate copy, right? So imagine that I have shared this lesson with a student. Actually, Kate, let me send this to you. Can you please open it, Kate? Yes, I'm opening it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we have this card for Katrina. Um, if I open this lesson now, and if I want to change something, I delete this, for example, or this. I want to do something different for this lesson, right, in my drafts. Will this affect the copy of this lesson that I have shared with my student? No. This is a separate thing. This is a separate entity. You have made the copy. Now the copy lives its own life. It is not connected to the original at all. And the same is true. So I can open it and show you. Yeah, I've deleted that. Yeah, it's there. It's still there. Nothing's changed. Okay, you can do the exercises. I will see her answers. You can show them, Kate, if you want. You can play with it a bit. Um, but if I go to drafts, for example, the original, it's not there anymore because I've deleted it. I can even delete the whole thing. It will still be here. Okay, so that's what you do. Now, what else you can do with a lesson? So you can send a copy to your student. You can also publish it in the community. Of course, only if it's your own lesson, only if it's you've created it. Yes, Kate. Yeah, we have a, le uh, a lesson, sorry. <laughs> we have a question in the chat. <laughs> um, in your experience, what kind of lessons are best to sell or to publish for free? All right, all right, that's, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. So we have devised that there are basically three types of content on Amazee, right? Or, or I mean, in general, educational content, three types of educational content. The first type is evergreen content. Evergreen are the topics that are always on demand, grammar topics, basic vocabulary topics, you know, like food or present tenses, things like that. Because they are evergreen, there are a lot of those topics circulating around, a lot of lessons on those topics. And even if you go to, I don't know, to the community and you write present simple, you will see a lot of lessons on present simple. But if you write, I don't know, um, what can it be? Um, inversion? Will we have anything on inversion? Not yet. Because it's like studied on advanced. Not very few teachers study version. Or maybe it can be um, cleft sentences. Do we have lessons on cleft sentences? Not yet. You see, so some lessons will be more produced than the others. So that's evergreen content for you. It's safe. It's very safe. It's something that will be always on demand and people will always want them. Christmas. Christmas lesson before Christmas of St. Valentine's Day. Well, that's, it's that's, evergreen. that's not evergreen. That's the thing. That's not really evergreen. It, 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 it's, it's, it's between. Every, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's between. So the first one is evergreen content. The second one is um, uh, ESL. English for, oh, wait, ESP, English for Specific Purposes, right? So it's English for professionals, specific professionals. So find your niche 
oh, I don't know, you are preparing for exams. That's always on demand, right? And there are not so many great materials for exam preparation. IELTS, CAE, TOEFL, um, GRE, GMAT, um, I don't know, BC, Business English uh, Certificate, and so on. So certificates or maybe English for uh, lawyers, English for medical professionals, English for IT specialists, but it has to be your niche, right? You have to find teachers who teach in that niche and offer them the lessons. And then finally, we have reactionist content. So something that will be on demand very, very, in a very short period of time, because it reflects something that everybody's talking about right now. It can be uh, a lesson on a news event. Uh, for example, Elon Musk changing Twitter to X. Or it can be about... Um, the Spanish elections that are happening right now or something like that, right? So it's reactionist content. And people will forget about it when the time passes. I think same can be done for like premieres, a Barbie lesson, right? A lot of people will wa probably want, let's see, a lot of people will probably want to teach that lesson now. I have 19 people saving it, right? Uh, but then if you post... A Barbie movie lesson, you know, a month after it's premiered, not many people will probably, you know, want it anymore because it's not hyped now. So it has to be a quick content if you're ready to make it quick, and you know, publish it immediately and spread the word about it. Then you can have a lot of downloads or a lot of purchases, but then the window for that passes very quickly. So you choose your niche. Yes, Kate. Yeah, I was going actually to say the same. You need to understand what kind of person you are and what is your psychological type, so to say. What is your personality? Are you more about creating this rapid content or are you the classy guy? So you just decide and uh, you need to realize, for example, how interesting this or that focus is for you personally and if you are into media you love reading tech crunch you are in all these uh social media and uh different communities you are on reddit all the time you love it go for it and i would say that um it will also work perfectly when you want to gain audience uh for especially when you start your career because this is what actually makes people pay attention, right? It This is what brings you new, um, not users, I would say, but just new followers, uh, new people into your profile. And uh, you have noticed there is a button today, right? You can uh, Somebody can click um, sign up for a class. So this is how you can find students and showcase your talent and see like if uh, these students, they want to discuss recent news and something that is happening right now. It's especially interesting for those who are in corporate world, for tech people, because they want to discuss tech news and AI and things that are happening right now, LinkedIn articles, etc. So yeah, that could work perfectly. Yes, yes. And you can reflect that in your profile. You can reflect what you are, what kind of content you produce in your profile. So here we have Osama who produces original content and that's business English or current news. So you don't have to focus on one particular topic. You can produce evergreen content and uh, or all three, but that's spreading it a little bit. So you kind of touch a little bit of, you know, all kind of audiences, but it's a good idea to focus on something specific. A lot of people will just create lessons for their own students and then just, you know, publish them in the community. I've created the lesson. This is what, you know, we do as teachers. Not all of us are exclusively, most of us are not exclusively content creators. We are teachers and content creators. So we will create a lesson for our student and then we will probably publish it in the community or want to sell it in the community. Um, for that, if you want a lot of downloads or purchases, you have to think, um, who is this lesson for except for my student? Um, will it be on demand? Like, will anybody else want it? And I mean, if your student wanted it, chances are somebody else will. So that's, that's things to keep in mind. I hope I've answered your questions. So we've talked about sharing lessons, publishing lessons. Let's... Um, go back to to drafts here so you um um you want to publish lesson in the community so you click here and if you simply want to publish it for free click publish and that's it but you can also make it a premium lesson as i said so you can set a price on it so for example five pounds six pounds ten pounds 
whatever you think the price should be. And that's it. And then you click publish. Now, you may notice that we have the business features thing here. What are the business features? Um, Amazing business is basically we have two types of accounts on Amazing. You can have a basic account, right? And you can use everything completely for free. Or you can have a business account. And the business account allows you to earn money with Amazing. But you need, so you pay for access to that. And the premium features from what we've shown you include selling lesson plans, so making your lessons premium and turning on the profile subscription, like the one we have here. I remember we had it, yeah, like the one I showed you in the dashboard, or making your lesson premium. AI Copilot is a premium feature. And we are working on adding even more uh, features. So this year you will see more things included in Maisie business accounts. So if you upgrade to business, that will allow you to earn more money or maybe it will save you a lot of time and lesson preparations because you've seen an AI copilot at a click of a fingers. You create exercises, texts, and um, a great lesson is, is done. Well, I, I think I've explained everything profoundly. <laughs> yes. Hi. Um, yeah. I think you've, you've explained everything very well. Um, it's very complete. There's a lot to take in. Um, one thing that I'm left in doubt about, obviously my students set up their own account. Yeah. So then are all of are, are there answers to the exercises saved? Is there a learning record store attached to their account that I as a teacher can see the responses to exercises? Yes. Yes. Yes, you can. Uh, actually, let me show you something. Um, so what I didn't talk about here, um, I think it just slipped my mind, really. Um, Somebody asked about folders, right? So the thing is, you can have a lot of different students. And then if you go to shared, uh, as here, you will see like a lesson for this student. Uh, this is from another teacher. So this was shared with us uh, for this student, for that student, for that student. And you will have a lot of different lessons shared. How do you check which lessons are shared with a particular student, right? How do you keep track of one particular student? So this is where folders come in. You can create a folder and write the name of a student here, right? And then, and then you can add lessons from shared to this folder. And once you open the folder, it's just, it helps with the directory. You will see only lessons that you've added to this folder. So in this case, it would be only lessons shared with this particular student. Um, for your student, when they click on shared, because this is where all the lessons will be stored for them too, they will only see the lessons you have shared with them because only you will share lessons with them, right? So they will see everything they have done. So for them, it will be from plus your name and all the lessons you've shared. So they can always go back to what they've covered and revise or read again. What I sometimes do is... Um, after a while, I may go to a lesson that I shared, you know, a while ago uh, with a student and I will reset all the answers. So, for example, like she hasn't, I don't know, Kate hasn't done. Yes. Okay. So you see Kate has done an exercise here. If I click on edit, I can reset students' answers. So click on that. The exercise is reset. What I do, I... I go back to uh, a, a, a lesson I shared a while ago. We've, we've covered it completely like a month ago. I will reset some exercises. I will ask my student to go back and do the exercises again. And that will reinforce, you know, retention, uh, vocabulary, grammar retention, whatever. It's a great tool. And sometimes when they forget something, I say, oh, okay, remember we covered that in that lesson. Go back to that lesson as a homework and just look through everything yourself again. Or like I will reset the answers and like do these exercises again for yourself. This has worked wonders for my students. I, you don't have I to create new copies. Also, uh, I guess you can also make new copies, copy the exercises and make a, oh, make oh. a final 
make an exam lesson to go absolutely over. absolutely so what we can do just like um i'm not in edit mode right now but like i can go to edit mode and i can you know select this like this like i just drag my cursor and i copy paste it to a new lesson let's see how it works i create a new lesson i paste it here that's it here you go i've copy pasted it so it's very easy to you know combine exercise from different lessons select it copy command c or uh, control c open a new lesson paste it command p control p oh v what is it control p control v command v yeah so you you paste it very easy and that's how you combine of course the same way um when you have a shared lesson with a student you think oh they need extra exercises right so you open edit you go here that's what i've been doing for the past week you click on the ai and you ask them to create example sentences with a rule i don't know present simple and continuous and then i don't know example sentences whatever you generate text and then you create a new exercise for them to do just like that so you have the text add it to free input gaps and so on right and then hide the words so of course they need to see what they need to write so that's what i will usually do right and I'll ask them to open the brackets and fill the gaps like that. Choose between present simple, present continuous. It used to take me so long. Now, really, 15 minutes, they have a new exercise. Not anymore. Like Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm very particular about my design, so I will always, you know, let go and, like, make it gray and, like... You know, I spend a lot of time on these design things, but <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> oh, no, but I, I do as well. But now you have time for that because another part of it's been, ta been taken care yeah, of. Yeah, absolutely. I don't have like, okay, I have to come up with 10 sentences. Okay, so Pigeon is drinking water. <laughs> and then like, AI can do that for you. So it's very quick. You can tweak it. You can make it better. You can take as often. So I've been using ChatGPT since it came out for this and just making quizzes yeah. in Moodle and things like that with it and using it, integrating it into my normal workflow. True. But it's nice to have it in the box here. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is that with ChatGPT, you have to know exactly how to write a prompt and you have to, you know, always word it the right way. And here it's like kind of taken care of already for you. So you choose the settings and you just like click generate and that's it. Yeah, the prompts are already there. In They're the already in built. Oh, right now we did this job, so don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah. Of course, like we will all also update the AI assistant as well. Like we will add new features to it, maybe more prompts to it that you, will be easier for you to generate even more different types of words. Yes, Frank. Yeah, um, I remember that um, halfway through the the workshop where. We talked about the possibility of keyword transformations you know the the example you yeah. gave about one sentence then you give the keyword and then you um um you know nice put the, the gap yeah. the thing is that sometimes there are like multiple responses or like the student like the example you put was i have no idea but you you a student can probably write i don't have any idea yeah is there a way to like input multiple options to the correct answer? Very good question. Of course there is. Uh, so let's open it here. Right. So here we have, I think this was um, the free input gaps where the students have to write themselves. Right. So for this one, I have goes, right. Do we have, um, I am not. Okay. Right. Yeah, they can write, I'm not correct so put it in the gap we have alternative option and you write i'm not and here you go so the thing is that if you know how to write correct prompts you can already ask the ai assistant to do that for you um i have asked uh at, at, at one, once like i was creating this this exercise for my student i asked them write 
three options for the verb. The first to be correct, the other two incorrect. And then I just sent everything to the gaps. It was done for me. Like you can, you know, use Ask AI to write, to specify the prompt, you know, and then you will have it. I will have it all like write the target word, the keyword in the gap, but then add two more options, wrong options, but plausible. I always say wrong, but plausible. <laughs> because <laughs> then they will write like hey i may write something weird right wrong but plausible in the gap that it works it actually works to save me so much time and making you know wrong options because hey i can do that for you just you have to know we will share so on our on our instagram amazy.uk and uh on our youtube channel we will share a lot of different you know tricks how to write prompts you know not to write prompts really but how to tweak the AI, the AI, and how to get the best results quickly, and so on. And we will share the prompts with you so you can copy paste them. Yes, yes, Frank. Another question. Uh, yes, and no. Well, it's actually a second part to the first question. You know that um, in that exercise, um, the point system. For example, if I want to do like a test, yeah, um, the point system is divided into two. For example, if you get half the the answer correct, you you can still get one point. Um, I know that you either get the whole correct answer or you don't. Mm -hmm. But what if you get half the answer correct? I know that I just assume that it's not available right now as a, as a feature, but have you thought about it or maybe it will be included later um, if there's a well, possibility? The thing is that I think what you're asking for is only applicable to kind of just like one type of exercise for one particular exam. So for now, I wouldn't say that it's feasible for us to focus on that. Um, but we we may consider we have a huge you you wouldn't you know even comprehend the amount of things we have in plan like in store for you in the future. It's pages long where we want to add, so it's probably somewhere there already, <laughs> but not in the nearest future because we have more pressing matters to focus on to add to the platform and so on. Um, but maybe uh, the thing is that, sorry, Paula, I see you. Um, one moment. The thing is that students sometimes, you know, they misspell a thing and they so worry so much about the red they get for the wrong answer. You have to explain to them as a teacher that making mistakes is fine and it's okay. Well, the, the main idea is that you did it right. And if you did it right, it doesn't matter if it's red, right? It's stupid machine. <laughs> so it just just um, ask the students not to worry about it. And that's it. <laughs> yes, Paula. No, I mean this is together with Frank's uh, question, but probably what you can do. I mean, if you are worried about this half or like one point and the other, probably like split in two gaps. That was. Probably. That was what I was thinking, but yeah, the opportunity but not... to write something, you know, you know, you write. Yeah. How but does the student this. know? <laughs> How does the student know where one half starts? Exactly, and... that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you could do yeah. that. You could do that. You could do, but it's much more difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know because I tried it, so that's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, that's possible. That's possible. You know, what you can do, another thing completely, what you can do, if you're worried about them getting the red, you know, for the wrong answer, you can use the table, right? So here you write, for example, the sentence, right? Here is the word they need to use. We were talking about keyword transformations. That's right. Here, you know, the beginning of the sentence, I, gap, went, whatever, whatever, right? And then you can write the correct sentence, answer, and then hide it in the spoiler. So they write their answer here. They don't get automatic checking, but they can click on the spoiler and then they can see. They can see the correct answer this way. Oh, it's not it's for student for students only not not for this one but you've seen it in in the in the um community right 
So you can do that. Or maybe it can be not a spoiler, but as I explained, you can, you know, choose the bottom color for the text and the top highlight color for, for the highlight. And that's it. And they can highlight it into the answer just to make it more colorful, for example, if you want. Okay, I think um, we need to finish now. Maybe, Kate, if you would like to take over, if we have more questions. Do we? No, I think uh, everything yeah, uh, has been discussed, guys. You are amazing. Thank you very much for being with us today. We appreciate it so much.